Um, what's up, guys? Um, this is African Fighters. Um, my name is Farouk, and today we have a very special guest with us, um, Mr. Maxwell Kalu, the founder and CEO of the African Warriors Fighting Championships. Mr. Ma Mr. Maxwell, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to have you on our on our show. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So, um, uh, you started African World, I think, in 2019, right? Or yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. tell us a little bit about your journey, um, general, who you are, and how you go into combat sports. <laughs> hey, where to begin? Where to begin? Um, so I've always loved combat sports. I've mm. always liked fighting. Parents were worried they had some sort of violent child growing up, but I just, I just loved martial arts. I loved. I feel like that you can't get any more real than combat. You know? Okay. I can't even really enjoy football because I'm like, yeah, that's cool, but I'd rather see two guys in a ring, in a cage, or mm. on some fighting. So I've always loved combat sports. Mm. Did kickboxing growing up, Muay Thai. Um, so yeah, I've just always been very close to combat sports. And then I think the journey into African Warriors was, had this background in combat sports, had a professional background in PR communications. Okay. Um, and grew up in London, but always felt a pull to home, a pull to Nigeria. Um, so I was aware of wrestling, like sort of typical, like traditional style wrestling known by mm -hmm various names in Nigeria, starting in my home village. So I just thought after some years of like really thinking about it and knowing I wanted to get involved in a professional sense, um, I was like, look, we have this amazing combat culture in Nigeria. Yeah. Um, one day I just stumbled across it. Um, and I was just like, how do, how, how, how do you not know about this? Mm. How has this not been taken from the villages and town squares and all of the random places mm. that you find it in. Why is this not a sensation? And you can see that it has all of the right ingredients to get there. So I just thought, yeah, man, I like, put it together, put together sort of my professional background, rallied around a team of people who understood sort of grassroots sports, who understood Nigeria, who understood that vision and we pushed forward and made African warriors. So what we do, what we define ourselves as, is we are the guys who are taking African fighting global. So currently we feature Dam Dam is the main sport we feature, and that is exciting indigenous Nigerian boxing. Mm. And we also feature wrestling. Yeah. Um, so is it man? It's like these sports need to be seen on a global level. And they also need to be seen on a local level more too. Um, they have huge followings. Thousands of people come out and go out to watch them. They go out to watch wrestling every day across Nigeria. Um, and we just want to just continue leveling it up. We want to take the athletes who are athletes who are warriors in every sense of the word and really offer them new opportunities. These are guys who have been fighting for years, who have sort of just gained so much experience, have so much to show and step in that sound. And we just want to be able to provide more opportunities for them, we want to offer them um, new avenues for, for, for providing for their families, for becoming the superstars you think they can. So that's it. That's how we arrived at African Warriors. Mm, wow, awesome, awesome. Uh, I believe you were... Um, you, you... We were based in the UK for a while, or I don't know if you grew up in the UK. So working, working abroad and all that. So how was it for you to leave your job, take your resources, your money, your finance, and say, oh, I'm going to Africa. Like you just explained, you saw the tradition, the culture. So how, um, now, you, now you went back home and now invest into the sport. So how was it for you making that decision to go back? And also, are you currently working in Nigeria or you are full-time into your business? And yeah, it wasn't that I was based in the, I was born and raised in the UK. I was born and raised in central London. So that's where I grew up, mm. school, everything. So that's what I knew. I was, um, I was very much aware of, you know, my Nigerian heritage and very proud of that. And, you know, we 
the music a lot growing up. And so it wasn't that I was totally divorced from it, mm. but it's a whole thing saying, okay, I'm going to go back and start a crazy fighting business. <laughs> um, but I think I'm going to go back for the holidays and go and enjoy December. Mm. Um, so yeah, like in terms of the journey, it's been a, it's been a journey. Mm. And I think the nature of our sports mean that the journey has been that much more bumpy. We've had to go to places that even the bravest homegrown Nigerian wouldn't go. Yeah. That's a uh, yeah. two things that go above and beyond on so many levels. So it's not been easy. And I think the main thing has just been building a team who really understands every aspect of, of the game, of the landscape. So it's not something that you can come in as saying, ah, I'm bringing all this great experience from London and all, you know, all this great international levels. Mm. This is local, this is grassroots. So having to rally a team that understood that, where we can bring different skills, that's really what's allowed us to build this to this point. So, um, yeah, um, um, I don't know if I'm to call you Dana White of um, Combat Sport in Nigeria at the moment, <laughs> but time will tell. Um, so how has scouting fighters uh, been for you? <laughs> I didn't get that. <laughs> I'm hoping for Dana Black. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so how has it been for you, um, scouting fighters from the north, the south, the west, east? How how did you convince people? How did you like the message you passed to them? Because people knew about combat sport, they knew about Dembe, Kokua, and all that, especially in the northern parts where I'm from. So Dembe is very popular. So how and most of the young, most of this, uh, the current generation now, the modern generation, are not too aware about the sport. They don't even know the history that much. They know about it, but they don't know about. They don't follow it that, and it's not that popular like it used to be in the past. So, how did you like pass the message to them? How did you motivate motivate them back to be like, oh, I know the sport, I want to take part in this sport? Where are you from, actually? Out interest. I didn't get that. Where are you from? I'm from KB State. <laughs> Although mix, I'm from um, Ocean State and KB. Yeah, my grandparents okay. are from um, KB and Ocean State. So I have both Yoruba culture and the Northern Kwa. My, my, all my life, I grew up in Sokoto. So I, I now came to the UK to study. I did my master's in the UK. I'm currently doing my PhD now in the UK as well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I haven't made it to the team. Um, our, our team has though. I've, I've been lucky enough to like, we've gone all around Nigeria with this. Okay. It's to various northern states. Mm. Very recently, just got back from Kanu. Okay. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, of course, Gambe is, is native to the north. It's in, yeah. the, it's in our city, DNA. You know, there's so many aspects of the sport. You can never separate Gambe from its northern culture. And so it's been a great journey in terms of understanding that mm. gets like, you know, just coming to grips with all of these cool things around this culture. Mm. And um, we found people very welcoming. Yeah. This is a sport that people love. This is a yeah. sport that's been contested for hundreds, if not thousands of years. So we came along and said, look, we can see this sport going to new heights. We are going to introduce certain things to bring up more things, but we're not going to change its DNA. Um, so, for example, we introduced the first comprehensive rule set, the African Warriors Dambe rule set, which means that African Warriors Dambe bouts now last for three rounds, three, 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 three minute rounds. Okay. Whereas before, there were just no rounds. It could just go in and yes. just guys would fight till. I, someone gets stopped out or I can't be bothered or whatever happens, happens. Yes. So just thinking about, you know, these are things that need to be tightened up. Mm -hmm. So now we have a rule set where you come in, you fight for three minutes. Um, the person who can win two of those three rounds is the winner. If, you, if there's a knockout, you're an instant winner. A round is won by a knockdown. So before, you'd have these things where I'd, feel, I'd leave fights feeling cheated, right? Because I'd watch a fight and say somebody just lands a good shot, or say somebody pushes somebody, as soon as a hand touches the ground, the fight's over. Over, yeah. And I'm like, I'm in the full fight. And it used to frustrate me so much. 
Yeah. So we said, okay, fine, what can we work out? And instead we said, okay, fine, you win a round by knockdown. Mm. But then that brings a new dimension to it where now you have this guy who's lost his first round, knows he's lost the first round, and is now coming gunning to win that next round. So and I think I want, I want to commend you guys for that because in a way you give the other op- the, op- the opponent um a chance to come back into the fight. Imagine being knocked down and the fight is over. It's, it's, it can discourage you to, to want to take part anymore. Like, I'm not going to do this anymore. Yes. <laughs> exactly. And you would see it. Like, you would see, like, a guy would be like, you can tell this guy is trained for this fight. This guy is ginger. This guy is ready for this fight. Yes. And he lost his footing. Mm. Yeah. So just little things like that. Like, being able to try to learn lessons from other sports. But again, keep that damn big DNA keep our sport traditional, keep our sport true to its origins. Mm. Um, so people have been very receptive. We've gone to various northern states. We've gone up and down Nigeria. We built um, our first camp in Enneguin um, within the Alsa community there and have great relationships there. We've done tournaments, Abuja, Kami, been to various places. And ultimately, the fighters are excited mm. because they recognize the opportunity they're the people who have been grafting for years so they're like this is a bigger platform and it's just been great for us to be able to deliver on that you know give guys a monthly income talk about medical care give these guys access to medical give like just level up how they're being able to approach the sport mm-hmm. and then there have been great moments like just very recently we had ufc champion kumari Ismail yes. took him to our camps so mm. things like that. Like imagine that you're a guy who's been fighting, guy from a village in Sokoto, you found yourself in Abuja fighting in a Gambia camp there, and the UFC champion comes up to you and says, Ah, I've been with guys yes. doing so well. Like these guys took so much from that. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a journey, but the community's embraced us. Um, we've learned so much and we continue to learn a lot, and it's it's just being respectful of the tradition, but at the same time, giving it a new set of eyes, you know? Yeah, you you talked about move, traveling to different parts of the country and all that. Uh, are you considering going to Sokoto? I would really would love to, see, to, to have you guys have an event in Sokoto because me and my colleague are both from Sokoto, and Sokoto is like the royal capital of the northern part of Nigeria. Yeah, so the mm-hmm. emir of Sokoto is uh, like the highest emir when it comes to the <laughs> Islamic um, aspect. So, and Sokoto, Sokoto is very welcoming. It's like the home to Gus, Gus, Zamfara State and KB State. So it used to be one state, Sokoto, then divided into three different states. So any type, any, any type in Sokoto is Zamfara and KB all away. So it's like you bring it in three states together. So it would be nice if you have an event maybe in Sokoto sometime soon. <laughs> yeah. Some of our fighters that we featured already, Dagon, um, Dagon Labaran, we had a few guys from Sokoto. From Sokoto, right? okay, okay. Of course, some of the okay. best fighters, of course, ancient Alsa City. So some of the best fighters are coming from Sokoto mm. already. So um, we'll get there 100%. Oh, like that'll 100%, be nice. That'll be nice. Yeah, so, you, course, you, touched, you touched, you touched on, on some, you were saying something. Sorry, I interrupted you. No, go on, go oh, on. Okay. You touch on um the, the rules. Um, about, about getting the, for you to break down the rules of, um, African Warriors Fighting Championship. How? Because I, you have two categories, the pure Dembe and also the African Warriors Wrestling, the Kukua. So um, how is the rules? We talked we talk about the rounds now, having it, having the fights in three rounds. Is it three minutes per round? Three minutes a round. Three minutes per round. Yeah. So what about other rules? Like in the cultural Dembe we know in um, northern parts of Nigeria, you see they wrap their hands. So they do some ritual baths, they do some, um, they use some, um, they call it liar, they, char- they use some char- charm for power, for, and some they use it to daze the opponent. So once they land the punch, the opponent is dazed, he can't come back. So there's different, so how is the rules? Are, are you guys still using the cultural um, advantage? Yeah. Are they using performance enhancing and all that? So is it regulated? <laughs> yeah, so exactly about, you know, this point about keeping to the culture of Gambia. Mm. There's no dambe without music, right? The, the drums, the music. The drums, yeah. Music. Yes. And equally, there's no dambe without all of those additional parts. Mm. Be it the 
armbands, be it yes. Yes. Is, it's the ankle bands, all of those things. Mm. So it's not our place and we would never take those key things out mm. because I've seen directly what that means to the performance of a fighter. Yeah. Like when you hear a musician calling the name of your grandfather from House Kudu, you fought before you did. Mm. What that does for a fighter, what that does for their psyche, I'm like, this is what I want to see. This is what people want to see. Mm -hmm. Equally, when you have one charm, that one malam from one village in Sukhota brought all the way down for you, you fight and you approach your fight in a whole different way. So yeah. you would never take those things out. Okay. Instead, it's more of things that's within our power. So again, things like the round times, things like clarifying what it means um, in terms of a knockdown. So three rounds, um, you're trying to win two out of three rounds or get some knockouts. Mm. So if you win one round, you get three points from a knockdown, for example. So um, you, yeah, sorry. So you're given three points from a knockdown. knockdown. You're given one point for knocking your opponent out of the arena. Okay. Um, a knockdown ends the round immediately. You go on to round two. Round two. Okay. So um, just like putting in like a simple rule set, which just allows fighters more room to show themselves and makes it i think more enjoyable because you have that added element of yeah. okay, what's going to happen mm. but things like charms things like the music those are always here to stay mm. um i think that's something that some people have asked us and it's like this is something we can never be apologetic about because this is the sport mm. and every sport has its own different approach to that muay thai mm. has um i forget the name for it but a similar thing where fighters mm -hmm. come out, they do the dance, they engage with the music. Yeah, they ritual and all the, yeah. So I think we can, we as Africans should never be ashamed of that or think, mm -hmm. oh, this is something that needs to be taken out of our sport. Mm -hmm. This is what makes the sport different mm -hmm. and we always keep that there. So we never take that out, but instead things like making sure that we're checking the wraps to ensure it's just rope. You've seen all sorts of sneaky things happening there, for example. Mm. Just making sure that fighter safety and just the actual flow of the fights is yes. done within set parameters is more what we're interested in. Yeah, from what I get now, you say not changing the traditional rules and all that. Like, but you mentioned something about the rap now. So you ensure there's no nothing in the hands, no liar, no charm, and nothing. Because why I'm, why I'm yeah. asking these questions, I don't know. It may not be easy to change those things now. I like the way you're bringing new rules, modifying the rules to make it more entertaining and all that. A lot of people in the next few years' time, I don't know, you, I would like to know that from you along the line, but people people will be showing interest into the sports more and more. Combat sport is becoming a big deal in Africa, in Nigeria. Young young people, people from like a bit world, from the worldly family or average living kids may want to take part into the sport. But one key element would be the issue of the charm. I don't want you to engage in something that is going to be harmful, maybe long time injury, long time. Um, so, but I feel if that is not part of it, people will be more open to take part. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Look, this is not soccer, it's not for <laughs> yeah, it's not for everyone, not for everybody, is, basically. Yeah, this is mm. primal fighting sport, yeah, let's not pretend mm. and let's be very honest about that. Perfect. And things like charms are involved in the sport. Mm. Um, and it's, I would take, I on that, I would take my steer from the fighters. If the fighters came to us and said, look, we want to move beyond that. We don't want these aspects to be involved. That's when we can have a conversation. Mm. Mr. Maxwell, yeah. You were saying something about if the fighters um, are showing interest in moving forward with the aspect. Yeah, yeah. It, it, Fighters came to us and said that we don't want charms to be a part of Dambia anymore. That's when I'd be open to that. Okay. But it's not the place I want to take dictating to guys who have been Takes. fighting for decades, for centuries, how they should change the sport on their level. Mm. And I don't think it's necessary. Okay. And also, I know that these are the things that make our sport exciting. Mm. People love this stuff. And it's like, it's not African Warriors is just sport that's uh, a brand that's consumed in Nigeria. We have fans around the world and people come to us because they enjoy this rawness. They enjoy the 
this Africanness. So that's revenant. I don't think it's something we need to change. I think we need to focus on fighter safety. We need to focus on ensuring that fighters are given the opportunity to show the best of themselves um, and fight to the most entertaining they can be. And okay. I that, that's the thing that I'm focused on. Now, talking about fighter safety, um, have you guys um, encountered any severe injury or so far so good, no injury, no lo- And how is the medical facility there on um, on ground during the events? How how you guys how are you guys handling those issues when it comes to health and safety? Yeah, no serious injuries to, to date. Mm. Um, I think it's a similar thing to you know when you say when you compare MMA to boxing, right? Mm. So people see MMA as a lot more bloody, but what people don't understand is a lot of the time the MMA is actually safer to compete in. Yes. So I think we see that similar thing in Danby where you're not fighters are not taking repeated shots to the head a lot of the time. Mm. There are knockouts, usually flash knockouts. There can be cuts and that sort of thing from the rope. But in terms of serious injuries, nothing so far. In terms of how we're approaching it, we take fighter for um, safety very seriously. So we have medical staff, ambulance on site at all of our fights. Awesome. And that's a first in Dambi. Mm. Like, you, you would have seen Dambi in villages, wherever. There's no health and safety. No, nothing. <laughs> nothing like that. <laughs> So, and it's and it's funny, and again, a lot of the lead is what we take from fighters in that we have an ambulance and, you know, Western-style medical doctors on one side. Mm. And then we noticed that we'd have that. And a lot of the time, the fighters wouldn't be interested in speaking to the ambulance of those doctors. And instead, we'd want to speak to the traditional doctor. Oh. So, and it was, again, it's like, well... We have to listen and watch what our fighters want to do. Like, mm. so we see that there's a bone setter, for example. Mm. So one injury, some injuries we have seen are dislocations. Yes. Fingers, shoulders, that sort of thing. And that's always happened in Dambi. So you have, at most Dambi camps, you have a bone setter whose primary job is to put things back in place. Back in place, yes. So you mix up. Um, like a concoction of herbs, of honey, of all sorts of things. And the guy's a real master at slipping a shoulder back into place, yeah. slipping a boat. Shout out so, to those guys. Uh, to be honest, to be honest, I, I, I respect our doctors, but when it comes to bone setting and all that, I give credit to those guys back home. They are very good. <laughs> they do things honestly, on point and quickly and good. <laughs> honestly. Like, and it's like, we saw that I was like, damn, like, I remember I was having an argument with one of the, with some of the fighters once. I know I'll send you the video just so you like, so you can see it. Like, you're going to let her, one of our best fighters, great guy, House Kudu, um, real big guy, knockout artist, he's a great kicker, like a fighter we're very excited about. Mm. You, you said what he is his name fight. now? Dogan Aleka. Aleka. I'm about to ask you about him along the line because I saw like he's like the face of the brand, like not the face, like just like the corner corner of MMA. He's like one of the major superstars you have on your roster. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Aleka is somebody we're very excited about. Mm. He has an exciting fighting style. Mm. He is just a sharp guy. Like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Aleka. And so Aleka, he had a fight with mm. Altan Umaru. And Umaru, very experienced guy, more experienced than Aleka. And Aleka, like, this was a big step up for him, like, to fight Altan Umaru, a senior fighter in House Arawa. So mm. the viewers might not know, I've mentioned houses a few times. Dambe has a house system. So mm. fighters don't fight for gyms or anything. They fight for a house. Mm. And that's based on the state you're born. Wow. So these houses go back hundreds of years. And so... Um, I think Sokoto sits, sits within House Arawa, and then you have House Kudawa, you have House Kudumada. And what that means is these fighters, this is how you're raised in the sport. So you'll start as a young boy, and as your place in that house will be running errands for the older fighters, doing sort of just boy work for them. Yeah. And eventually you'll watch, you'll learn, you'll learn, you'll learn. Okay, they'll say, okay, you can fight now. And so, 
they don't have classes or anything. Instead, fighters are matched on um, on experience levels. Mm. So a young fighter from Hospital will be matched against a young, young fighter from yeah. mm. And that's how the boys are in the sport. So um, Aleka was a young fighter by those means from House Kudawa. And Alta Numaru, who we fought, was the senior fighter in House Arawa. Mm. And we had seen Aleka fight and said, you know what, this guy has what it takes to step up. Yeah. And we said to him, we, we want to make this fight. So he's like, okay, fine. And, and it's funny because you, you, you need to fight in this house system. It runs so deep, right? Mm. I could come with $10 million more and ask two fighters from the same house to fight, and they would refuse, no, they would refuse to fight. Just, wow. just out of they won't fight. Hmm. Like, that's my brother, I don't fight. No I fight. fight him. Yes. And, and so, Aleka of House Kudu, great guy. And he got into this fight with Umaru, and in this fight, he dislocated his shoulder. He took like an awkward fall oh. out of the arena. And all of Umaru's weight dropped onto Aleka's shoulder, the shoulder mm. So I'm watching this and I'm like, okay, well, that's the fight over. Take, and literally in the video, I'm shouting, I'm like, take him to the doctor. There's a, literally an ambulance there and doctor's yes. there. Take him to the doctor and sort out his shoulder. His brothers are like, no. <laughs> like, what do you mean, no? His shoulder's been popped out. I'm like, no, 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 no. They, we are house honors on the line here. One of our young fighters is facing a senior fighter yeah. of our biggest rival. Hmm. This fight can't stop here. So they brought the bone setter, who right there and then popped his shoulder back into place. Wow. And Aleka is there with his shoulder being rotated back into place, screaming. And I'm like, and they pop his shoulder back into place. He jumps back into the arena and he goes on and wins the fight. Wow. Just to talk about what this sport is. This isn't a game. This isn't mm, something that you yes. can go to the gym yes. up. But honor and everywhere. pride and all that in place. Ancient <laughs> pride, honor, all of these things are at stake. Yes. And so mm-hmm. it's just been, we have moments like that every single day. Mm. So I'm um, taking it back to your original question in terms of medical. It's like, we have that, we provide that. And we also are very aware of how fighters have been approaching the years before us. Mm. So we're introducing gum shields, for example. Okay. Um, awesome. So just in terms of, again, raising the standards there. Mm. And we've even had some pushback against that. Like fighters are like, I don't want to wear this. What is this? It's distracting me. So slowly, you know, we have to work with our fighters to understand, introduce mm. them and show them why things are beneficial to them, beneficial yeah. to their health, mm. beneficial yeah. to the longevity of their careers. And we're doing that. Um, but yeah, we, we've seen a whole bunch of interesting things on the medical side, but no serious injuries. Um, and a big part of that is matchmaking. So making sure you're matching fighters of similar weight. And we're going to go forward to introduce proper weight classes shortly. Okay. Um, making sure we're fight, matching fighters of the right level of experience. Senior fighters, fighting senior fighters and ensuring that everything is, yeah, everything is respected and, and the fighter's health is, is prioritized. Awesome, awesome. So talking about the weight class, you mentioned about the, something about the weight now. What classes do you have at the moment? Is it just one weight class or you have different weight classes on ground? So currently, <laughs> open weight. So currently Dan is done at open weight. Mm, okay. um, so fighters of the same stature are matched up, okay. again, based on experience. But um, I'll have some more information coming out soon on the weight okay. classes we're introducing, um, okay. which you know, I'll make sure you guys get first. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I'll be taking some questions from my colleague who is not here today, uh, JB Jibril. So his first question is, um, how does um, um, okay, how do you plan to get in the how do you, how do you plan to get the casual Nigerian fans interested interested in them base sports and cocoa? A lot of people are still of this is the tradition, uh, traditional stuff. It's not something I'm buying. But from what you just said, just the little story you narrated just got me excited. I was just like looking forward to see uh, Dogo Aleka fight again. And I've seen some of his highlights. I posted some on our page. So well, it's something that is like that. Just you, you just want to see more of that. Like it's in, interesting, entertaining, yeah. fighting for honor, for pride. Yeah. So 
his question is how can you get the casuals the just average nigerian guys excited about um cocoa and dembi sport i think the starting point is content mm. we have invested a lot of time effort money in producing what we think is the best dembi content um this isn't just content shot on phones this is real content where we're really showcasing what is exciting about the sport. Mm. So I think that's constantly always going to be our priority. Mm-hmm. Um, also introducing more, introducing the fighters, personalizing them. So um, having people understand the personalities, the people behind the fighters. These are all guys with hopes and dreams and families and all of these things. And we're working a lot on making sure that people get to meet the fighters on that level. Mm. Um, so that's a big part of that. And I think it's just, again, it's also doing things slightly differently. So we did an event on a beach in Lekki, for example. So okay. for those who don't know Nigeria, know Nigeria well, know Lagos well, we took Dambe from the often lowbrow villages it's competed in. Yes. And we took it to a beach in a nice part of town. Yes. So we're going to continue doing it. In the biggest so, commercial um, city of the whole country. <laughs> exactly. So we're mm. going to see, we're going to do that. Mm. So um, just, con- I think, really in terms of taking it to the, to the casual Nigerian fan, it's just giving them great content which shows them that Nigerian combat sports, our own sports are exciting and are here. Um, it's doing some key events where people get to see it up front for their first time. Um, And I think that's it. But then it's also, it's not just, we start with Nigeria. Nigeria is our home. Nigeria is where this sport is native to. But we're taking this globally. Mm. If you are a fan of MMA, you are a fan of boxing, you will enjoy Dandy. And we get a lot of people daily saying that to us. Like, wow, I've never seen this before. This is cool. This is different. So... We're just going to carry on putting out great content. We're going to carry on giving people the opportunity to understand the cultures, the customs, um, and just go from there. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Thank you for that. Um, his next question is um, just a follow-up of what you just said now. He said, how are you guys planning to improve production? And do you have any partnership um, um, deal with any broadcaster like, so that they can showcase the sports on TV and all that? So what's your partnership? Are you working on any partnership deal with brokers yeah. on the production? Yeah, we're working on a few things and I can't go into detail on that, but okay. things, are, things are in the pipeline. I'm very okay. excited. Okay. Um, yeah. Currently, we are we're broadcast on UK TV, Yanga TV, okay. um, which is awesome. available on Sky. Mm-hmm. Um, so you can watch season one of Active Warriors on there. Um, but yeah, we've got a few things in the pipeline, a few exciting things. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Great one. And another question again from JB as well. We've touched on that. Um, he's saying, um, do you have a, um, a face of Dembe? Like you know, um, the some person you're pushing as a brand, the brand face. And we talk about Dogo Alika mm. now. Okay. And you, you said he's no longer with yeah. uh, African World. What happened? Is he signed to another promotion? Or... I say he's not with African World. Oh, I thought you said something like that. Oh, okay. okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah, no, Dogan Aleke is very much an African Warriors fan. Because I thought you see one of your former fighters, so I didn't get that well. Okay, okay. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Dogan okay. Aleke is, is still an African Warriors fighter. Okay. Awesome. Um, and meet him more in the uh, documentary we just did with Vice News. Okay. Um, then you get to meet Dogan Aleke more. You can check out his stuff on our page. I think okay. Aleke is somebody we're very excited about. Dogon, Bagon Dogon Alta is somebody we're very excited about. Okay. As well. It's another fighter, big knockouts, big punches, exciting guy. Um, and Shagon Yesanda, again, another fighter um, who's doing great things. And I'll just say if anybody's reading this or hearing this, thinking, what do all of these titles that I'm hearing, Dogon, Shagon, Bagon, <laughs> mean? Just a quick, quick <laughs> Dambe knowledge. Yeah. So fighters, those are probably the three most common titles in Dambe. Mm. Dugon, if I know this, in Asa language means big, big, strong tool. So that's a title that's given to a fighter who you know, is a big, muscular guy. Yes. So a lot of guys 
given that nickname and put that in front of their name. Their name, okay. Bahagon um, is something you hear a lot, and that refers to a left-handed. Left-handed, fighter. yes. So yes, um, so that's a guy who's primary, primarily a southpaw. Mm. Um, so he's given that title. Mm. And Shagon, Shagon is a mark of respect to a senior fighter. Mm. So if a fighter learns the game from a senior fighter, he's known as his shagger. Mm. So um, if you taught me the game, I'd become your shagger, you know? Mm. So, yeah. uh, mm. so, that's, so when, when fighters go by those names, that's what, that's what it's referring to. Mm, okay. um, so um, Dogon, big, and big strong tool, Bagon, left-handed, shagger, somebody's, so somebody's shagger. Yes. Yes, thanks for that insight and the knowledge there. Um, another question from Jibo before we move forward. Um, oh, okay, we've touched on that. He's talking about also the drug, um, the drug testing and all that, and maybe noising, noising of um the local um um ceremonial bat and all that. So it's like, how can you? Um, how are you trying to change? Okay. We've touched on that. We're not changing narrative. It's going to be still cultural. So I think we're going to just skip the question. So my next question is going to be on um, the tournament format. So what, um, how is the competition um, with you guys? How are you setting the competition? Is it tournament based? Is it, is it um, league based? How is it how the structure of yeah. your, yeah. Yeah, we have, we have some more stuff coming out on that very soon. So currently how we do is we have our, we run a camp system. So we have our own camp where we have about 50 fighters based living there, training their fighters of various sizes. And that's the traditional Danbe system where you have a camp and fighters represent their houses and they fight um, regularly between them. Mm. So we're going to be um, introducing a league format very soon and we're gonna, you're gonna hear some more info on that. But currently, our focus has just been gathering the best fighters mm. and really seeing for ourselves who is who's the best of the best. And we're going to be able to offer a new level above the traditional camp format, which will be coming mm. soon. Awesome, awesome. Um, so next question, still similar to this, um, what do we expect from the uh, African Warriors Fighting Championship? What exciting things you guys are cooking that we should be looking up to or looking forward to? Yeah, what you can expect from us is taking Dambi, taking Kokoa, which is wrestling, to a new level. Um, so expect better content, expect more content, expect the opportunity to meet fighters and really understand them on a personal level. Um, and expect to be able to see our content in a few different places. We're, we're working on a lot. We take this thing very seriously. And um, more and more people are really sort of getting to understand what we do and are coming looking for us. So yeah, you're gonna, a lot a lot is in the pipeline. Okay, awesome, awesome. We're looking forward to that. And so my next question, um, in Denby or back back in the days, like the old, in the, um, some 40, 50 years back when it was still popular in local communities, they used to fight for either a house or sometimes even for a bicycle, sometimes for a piece of land. So how is the prize money in the African Warriors Fighting Championship? What's the prize money? And what, what, what has been, the, what is the highest prize ever won so far since you started? And what's like, what is the fighter pay like? People have been complaining about fighter pay in the UFC. I know you are not there yet food on some level, the UFC is totally <laughs> different. So how is the fighter pay? How does it motivate them more to come in? Are they happy about the pay and all that just through more? Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, we're, we're not yet paying Anthony Joshua money. Um, <laughs> but, but our primary purpose is giving these guys new opportunities. Yeah. And what we've seen with that is exactly like money's a motivator. These are prize fighters. So we take good care of our fighters. We don't just give prizes. We give monthly stipends as well, okay. which is new. So usually wow. fighters would... Uh, you know, work other jobs, do whatever they're doing, come and fight and win a prize. For our core African Warriors fighters, we're able to give them a monthly stipend on top of prizes too. Um, so that just means that fighters are able to take better care of themselves, are in a better frame of mind to come out and perform. 
So that's constantly going to rise. Mm. Um, you know, always, as we grow, our fighters grow with us. Um, so, yeah, like we take care of our fighters. Mm. It's very important. Um, and, sad, you know, a lot of these guys have come from some of the poorest parts of Nigeria, you know, some very poor communities. So from the very start, that's been something we've taken very seriously. Mm. Um, so, yeah, you know, as we grow, as more things happen, we're going to be able to extend more opportunities to those guys, mm. be it financial and all of the rest. So, um, yeah, we're, we're pushing on that front. Awesome, awesome. I don't know if you don't mind telling us how is the pay like, a monthly stipend. I don't know. I know they may not be all having the same pay, but just something that people can get out there and like, oh, this is exciting. Because people are motivated by money, you know, <laughs> as well. Exactly. I mean, I mean, go into detail in terms of figures. Okay. But what okay. I will say is, mm. uh, is um, through African writers are making comfortably more than the monthly minimum wage in Nigeria. So our fighters are being very much taken care of. Awesome. At the stipend level, along with accessing big prizes, which in some cases can be life-changing. Money. Awesome. 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 Thank you for that. So, um, we're going to we talk about the stakeholders and um, the government. How, how has the support been for you from the government? Are they really backing you guys up? Are they contributing in any way you guys want to support? Or are you just, are you just doing this on your own as a private company, as, as a private organization? Yeah, well, we're a private company. Mm. Um, and, and we think that in order for us to just do this, we have to be a lean sort of business just pushing forward and not waiting for anyone. Mm -hmm. In fact, we in government. We're um, an affiliated member of the um, Nigerian Federation for Traditional Sports. Um, we previously did an event in Lagos in collaboration with the Lagos State Federation for Traditional Sport. Okay. Um, but the honest truth is, is that traditional sports not the highest sport on the priority list for government. Mm. So for us, it is our priority. It's our existence. Yes. So we had great feedback and great conversations with government, but government are not we're pushing forward with this thing because we believe in it. Mm. Okay. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, so what do you, uh, what message do you have for people, um, Nigerian boxers, wrestlers, um, back home who are trying to go through the amateur route and wanting to trans um, transition into the African warriors. So what message do you have for them? Do you think they are welcome or do you think this is just meant for those guys who are real warriors who are determined to go in through the spot? But I feel like any Nigerian is a real warrior. Dambe or wrestling or not. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I, my message to if you're, if you're a fighter, I mean, we've had, we're having some interesting conversations about that as well, actually. People from other combat sports wanting to, to try their hand at Danbe, for example. Come and see us. The door is always open. Okay. We exist to give Nigerian, African athletes the biggest possible platform. We exist to take these sports to a new level. And that's always going to be our focus. So if you, if you can get behind that, come and join us shoot us an email, shoot us a message, um, and we can make something happen. Um, the African Warriors Fighting Championship, we're taking African fighting global, and it's not something we can do alone. So come and join us if you're an athlete. Get in touch if you're a media organization. Get in touch if you're a potential partner. We're here, we're here, yeah. media organization. We'll love, we'll love to be part right. of it, part of you guys. <laughs> Anyway, we can exactly. contribute, support. We are very, very open to that. We want to help push the culture, the combat sports culture in Africa and Nigeria and yeah. all that. Yeah. yeah and I, you know, I love, I, I followed African factors for a while. Like, I love what we stand for in terms of Thank you. Thank you. African fights into two new audiences, celebrating it. Thank you. Very um, much. So, I, you know, I very much buy into that. So, of course, man, we'll do some, some collaborations Not as you. well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so um, finally, um, talking about, I know, it, I know it has not been easy for you, like you said initially at the start, using bring, coming back home, organizing this whole thing. In my own, um, from my own angle, all I believe is we need more private um, um, sport um, administrators or uh, sport promoters, be it soccer, um, table tennis. We just need people to come in more and then challenge, not 
not not in a bad way, but just to make the government sit up and look. Okay, these people are doing well in the sport. We can do more as well. So, what is your what's your what's your take on that? What's your what can you say about um private um sport um how do I put it um sp- private um sport administrators? Do you think we need more people like you to come into to come back to Nigeria from all over the, any part of the world they are to come back? Those who have a lot of people have those resources, they have the ideas. But you just feel like I'll come back home and I'm going to suffer. I'll not get the support I want. I'll lose money. I'd better just stay back in the UK or stay back in the US and do my thing, enjoy my life with good ideas. What do you, what message do you have for those guys? Let me put it this way. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No problem. No problem. You got a question, right? Or should I come um, again? Yeah. More, okay. Do we need more private sports organizations? Hmm. And do more people need to come back from around the world to, yes. to take Nigerian sport? To yes. yes. Yeah, I think um, more, more organizations on ground would definitely be helpful. Um, it takes an ecosystem to build any sport, to build yeah. sports. Yes. So um, people coming at it from different approaches, different angles is great. It will be great. So, yes, that's it. In terms of people coming back from other parts of the world, like you know, sons and daughters of the diaspora, of course, I think we need ideas. I think at the same time, people need to come with which, the right mindset. It's not, it's not a case of coming back with arrogance or coming back saying, you know, I have an accident or I grew up in the US, so you know, I have yes. the ideas. The mm-hmm. But it can be more of, I have a slightly different worldview and I can see different kind of opportunities. And I need to collaborate and I want to collaborate. So I think there's definitely room for that. That's definitely the journey I took and the journey I'm still on. Um, and yeah, I, I think there's definitely room for that, 100%. Okay, okay. Thank you for that. Uh, one last question. Um, I'll, the question then, yeah, before we wrap up. Um, are you going to say you have started making good return of investment at the moment or still early to say? So far, we're, we're, we have built a brand which is increasingly resonating on a global level mm. in a few years. Mm. Um, we have fans across the world who get messages daily. We've been able to change the lives of fighters. So we're already seeing so much progress. Mm. There's a whole lot of progress. To and this is just the very start, but I'm, I'm very excited to be where we are. Today. Awesome, awesome. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Maxwell, for your time. Wish you all the best and commend you for what you've been doing. It takes a lot to go back, do this, and put your money, invest, and all that. So wish you the best. We want to see African Warriors become, become one of the biggest promotion in Africa. Not to, Because we have other Dembe organizations in Senegal, Cameroon, here and there, but by the grace of God, in the, next few years you'll be the number one in whole of africa that's our wish for african warriors <laughs> inshallah, <hopefully so. laughs> inshallah yes <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much for your time we really appreciate um your time thank you yeah, thank you thank you for the opportunity thank you, thank you. for the platform um to speak thank you oh. Come on, Africans! Oh.